Commander, we're tracking several reported abductions via the Hologlobe. I've got the coordinates locked in. Good evening and welcome back to XCOM. Last time we cut it off just as a new set of abduction missions popped up on the Hologlobe, so today we'll be cleaning that up. In addition, I'll be finishing off all the requested soldier uh, customizations, and we'll finally unlock Meld, so I'm really excited to uh, show that off to you guys. Uh, just a quick side note, I did lose a bit of footage, so you might see a couple of gaps here and there, but I did manage to recover at least the emission, so uh, really, you're not missing out on too much. If you have any questions, though, just let me know in the thread. So, let's get down to it. So, as uh, you might have been able to guess, I did choose to go with the uh, South Africa one. Again, I'm really concerned with getting en engineers here, because the less expensive I can make all the equipment, all the facilities, the... Um, uh, the satellites, everything, the med kits especially, just everything. I need it to be cheaper and I need to be cheaper now because as you saw, money is a huge uh, limiting factor, especially early on in the game. Although those long research times are a pain in the ass, well, you know. So uh, we are going with uh, our sniper, uh, Cecilin, on this mission. As you can see, this is, um, as you might be able to guess, this is before I actually customize them. Don't worry, I will be showing off the customizations I did later on in this video. But for now, we're just going to uh, take care of this abduction mission. We have visual on the mission site. Setting down. We're heading to South Africa for this one, and we need to get down there fast. Alien activity continues to surge within several major cities. Our response is crucial to minimizing the spread of panic. It's a little bit late to actually be explaining this, in my opinion, but Bradford does bring up a point that the cities in which you do not actually uh, go to will have a massive increase in panic, and all of the other countries in that continent will also increase in panic. Uh, you might have noticed that in the Situation Room, so really, just sort of playing with whatever countries you actually help in the induction mission is really important. Yeah, I'd say even more so than choosing which uh, reward you get from them. So I swear those, those are pigeons Central, in the background. This is Big Sky. Strike team is touching down now. Standing by for your orders. Roger, Big Sky. Reading you five by five. Strike one has the green light for deployment. And with that, we'll get down to it. Looks like we're on some sort of a, a rooftop. So I do uh, recall this mission, if only because this map pops up again and again. Uh, fairly large for a rooftop mission. And there's a lot of the, the construction equipment you can see up there, just uh, up of the soldier. That there's a lot of... Um, there's a fair number of ramps and such like that, so you really gotta watch out for the high ground, especially if the aliens manage to get up there. And there's a lot of blind corners around the back of those shipping containers, so it can make for quite a uh, close quarters intense engagement. But for now, as usual, just gonna spread my forces out and just try and trigger one alien group at a time and gun them down. So most of my soldiers are in position, however, Cecilin, as he did move, and he doesn't have a... Uh, the snapshot uh, skill, he will not be able to use Overwatch nor fire his sniper rifle uh, this turn. So, um, what I have to do is then put him in Overwatch with his pistol. And we do finally find the first two sectoids, naturally, after everybody else has moved. And of course, I move that soldier and he's flanked now. So, I take this opportunity to show off uh, Dradalin's special ability, the smoke grenade. It will increase the defense of units as well as uh, decreasing the chance of the enemies to hit them. So it's a really good idea when one of your soldiers is suddenly caught uh, unawares in front of a group of enemies. I've definitely had it save soldiers' lives more than a couple times. You can see him just switching uh, Cecilin over to a pistol. And although I do have him hunkered down because I'm thinking those aliens are going to come right around the corner and flank him too. I do get lucky that one just does the uh, mind meld so he won't be attacking this turn although this one will take a pot shot. And, of course, my smoke grenade is worth basically just a fart in a windstorm. So I do get a, I do get a zero one on the meld, and I'm thinking, how the hell am I going to take this guy out? Because I don't even have a shot if I use running gun. At least that's what I thought first off, but I do just use it just to maybe throw on Overwatch, something like that. And it looks like I'm just trying to hem it haul like where I want to send them like, do I want them to cover or... And I do see the second melt canister actually, so I'm wondering where the hell is the first one and uh... Am I gonna lose it? Because usually the the, uh, the second of those two has a fair few more turns on it than the uh, first one, so I'm like... Where the hell is it? 
I'm thinking it was probably up to more to the uh, left. If, if we take where that first metal canister is and we say it's up, then it's more to the other side. And I'm like, that's not a shot that's going to happen in any t anytime soon. So, let's go for a shot that's a better chance to hit, the rocket launcher. As you can see, it's basically acts somewhat like the uh, grenade in that there's a bit of a radius to it. And there is a 90% chance the rocket will go exactly where I click it. So it's very, very nice, especially to take out a group of these weaker enemies. And that does take out everything, and I'm wondering what the heck was that 3 damage against? Because I'm honestly not sure. I think I might have blown something up and it did extra damage. There might have been like a power generator back there or something. So even though I didn't have a shot with uh, Gonzalez's uh, run, run and gun, you can just sort of speed on up there and uh, go on overwatch around this. <clears throat> sorry, around the side of the shipping containers. And he actually does spot the other sectoids. And because he's in running gun, he can uh, take a pot shot or go into Overwatch. And not the worst chance to hit them. So I decide to throw, roll the dice, and Gonzalez comes through again. Quickly, he's very quickly becoming one of my VIPs, and I wouldn't mind if one of you guys claimed him because I think he's actually going to become a permanent fixture on the team here pretty soon if he keeps performing like this. And unfortunately, Cecilin has nothing even resembling a shot right now. I'm just I'm trying my damnedest to get him up there onto the shipping container, but for some reason, the game seems to think that I want him down, like like I want him on the uh, I got, sorry not on the in the um uh, in the shipping container, but it just it is not letting me, and I'm really starting to get pissed off. Like oh sure it'll let me go right where there's no cover, but where there is cover and we could actually have a fantastic shot. Uh no no the game does not want me to have that. It is stop trying to throw aliens at me, and it's just freaking cheating at this point. So now I'm just thinking, like, where else can I send him? Like, where would he actually ha have a shot of those aliens on the high ground? And the answer is basically nowhere, because I sent uh, somebody else right there into that little hollow between the shipping container and the boxes. And now I'm thinking, oh, I'm making sense to the other side of, the of those uh, cinder blocks. No, it will not let me go anywhere up there. And I'm like trying everything I can. I'm like, where else can he go? <laughs> What's going on? I don't know. I'm just at this point, I'm just like, screw it. You can stand there and don't get shot. And of course, the sectoid moves to where he, where I'd have a perfect shot. And Gonzalez fortunately doesn't take any more damage. Like at four health, he could probably be crit and killed by that sectoid's plasma pistol, no problem. And at this point, I'm wondering where's that other melt canister? Like, I really need to get it before it gets locked down, and I should probably get this milk canister at this point the sectoid accidentally shoots it and blows it up. So I'm thinking, I really want to get uh, Cecilin a, uh, like, like a kill here, and I find out, oh, he can actually just grab it through the wall. Hand, well, Cecilin, you might not be able to shoot after, we shoot with your sniper rifle after moving, but at least you can uh, phase your arm through solid matter and grab the meld. And Gonzalez believe it or not, gets a fantastic final shot and just blows the sectoid out through the wall, and that's the last one. I really couldn't believe that. I thought for sure there'd be at least six sectoids, like, but honestly, I'm not like, complaining if the game wants to throw another easy mission at us. I always wondered how the hell this like, Sky, Sky Ranger can get from the base to like a different continent so fast. I'm pretty sure it goes suborbital. And uh, we finally get our first squaddy up to uh, the, the uh, corporal level, so we'll give him the upgrade while he's lying in a hospital bed bleeding out. So the question is tactical sense, which is plus 5 defense per enemy in sight, up to plus 20. Or aggression, which is plus 10 critical chance per enemy in sight, up to a max of plus 30%. Uh, I'm going to go with Tactical Sense on this one because I find that, um, yeah, you'll have an increased critical chance, but really, if the shotgunner's like that far that far forward, he's going to kill it in one hit anyway. And there's a couple of new medals. I'll be going over those later. I go with Tactical Sense because if there's that many enemies around, you're going to want more defense than you, you are critical be because touch, you can only kill so many units Commander, per turn. You can now honor our soldiers by awarding them medals for accomplishments you deem appropriate. You can view and award medals in the barracks. 
I'll be getting to that. I'll be getting to that later, and I'll be speaking more about that in the thread. But the thank you for saying what you said, Bradford. Be... Shut the You're fuck up, Doctor Shit. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, new satellite uplink, probably a fantastic idea because um, I have like no more space for satellite uplinks uh, for for satellites. Um, excuse me. After the, I launched this one. And uh, we're finally going to see about um, the final bit of basic research, uh, the uh, xenobiology, which will unlock autopsies as well as a crap ton of other stuff. You're telling me that we should risk the lives of our troops so we can take one of these things alive? Yes. Without a live specimen, I'm afraid we've reached the pinnacle of what my team is able to accomplish. And how do you suggest we do this, Doctor? The autopsy I've just completed confirms that the alien's physiology is quite similar to our own. A highly concentrated electrical current delivered at close range should cause neuro- Close range? And what happens if it doesn't work? Do you really think this is worth the risk? I do. We do not know our enemy. How can we hope to stop something that we do not understand? If we can capture one of these creatures alive, we may be able to communicate with it. And interrogate it. Find out what they want. Where they're operating from. Yes. That possibility outweighs all risks, in my opinion. I can construct a safe enough facility to house our captive, but I do not know how we could possibly communicate with it. Not to worry. I will see to that. All right. I'll speak to the commander. All right, with that cutscene, we finally have ourselves our goal. We need to capture one of these uh, little SOBs, and we need to find out exactly where they're operating from and figure out what the hell we're going to do about it after that. A um, lot of text here. Again, you can just pause it if you, if you uh, want, want to read it. I can also transcribe it into the uh, into the thread if anybody uh, wants me to, because I know the uh, font isn't exactly the best, especially with that blue text on the blue um, fluorescent light in the background. So now we, have, we actually have to build a facility to contain the uh, captured alien. Fortunately, we can hold off on that, at least for a short while. Uh, the arc thrower is basically an oversized taser that you can use to stun the alien. And right, I'm just thinking, what do I want to do with do right now? The only thing that's uh, going to be uh, faster than slow is going to be the melt recombination. Why abduct humans seemingly at random? There must be a pattern that we haven't established yet. Well, for right now, we are ending the uh, footage that I uh, pre-recorded, so apologies for the uh, jump cut there that I'm sure nobody noticed whatsoever. Ugh. So uh, back we are, and um, this is where I will be um, uh, modifying these soldiers. So uh, you guys will get to see your uh, your little author, your little uh, avatars in there. Uh, just give me a second to uh, cut over to that, and we'll get started. So uh, this is a uh, small tree soldier. He went for the uh, basically Russian and hotline Miami look. He did steal the door. I'm sorry about that. Dradlin, here's your soldier. I do believe this is what you ordered. I love the goggles. And Cecilin for a more sort of streamlined look without the hat. But I gotta say, I love the uh, color there. And excuse my uh, misclick. If you want uh, better pictures of your soldiers, I'd be happy to oblige. Sorry that it just sort of breezed on by. But I'm eager to get back into the game after a, a, a week away from it. Right now our goal is just basically figure out the meld and then figure out what the heck we're going to do with the alien containment chamber, so let's get down to it. And in addition, my concern is just like if I'm going to launch that satellite over Brazil. Like the $200 would be great, but Brazil's not really panicking and not going to give me a lot of monthly funding, so I'm thinking my talents could be better spent elsewhere. And at this point, just uh, also just figuring out like what else is going on. I still can't believe Dr. Vaughn expects our troops to try to bring one of those things back here in one piece, much less alive. Yeah, you can see that Brazil only has two slots of panic, and like Europe is absolutely losing their shit right now. Although it would be nice to get the two hundred dollar injection from Brazil right now. I'm thinking we would get scientists from uh, Europe if we launched there. Like Brazil wouldn't give us nearly as many uh, personnel, and Russia, for example, give us a lot more money. It, it's basically a matter of uh, can I wait for the better reward, or do I think that we would be better served by the two hundred dollars right now? This is, yeah, harder decision than I thought. Like, this is part and, pos part, part and parcel of XCOM, honestly. You really have to make uh, your sacrifices where you can. Yes, I do still have to give them one satellite. It still is $200. You can stop looking at that now. I'm receiving you. We'll monitor that contact. 
but I don't think it's related to the UFO activity. Yeah, sometimes you get little snippets of conversation here and there. Sometimes they're funny, other times they're just boring as that. So now again, just matter of fast forwarding and see what we can find out. Just basically pushing up right to the end of the uh, request from South America. And I didn't pause it in time and <laughs> I wasn't too happy about that. Although it's still there, I'm wondering if it's worth it to go back and check and I decided, you know what, screw it. Let's just get the workshop going. So yeah, we won't be getting the money from Brazil, but I think that pretty much took the uh, difficulty of the decision out of my hands right there. Yes, he is going to say that every freaking time. Now it's just a matter of, do I want to soothe Russia or soothe France? Uh, well, Russia's going to give us more money. And of course, I do not have any interceptors over in Europe, so if there are any uh, UFOs, then I'm not going to be able to do anything about it. And I'm also not too impressed. It's going to take another nine days for more satellite uplinks. At this point, I'm just waiting for the counts report, because that's when you get your monthly injection of cash. And for now, we'll just transfer a, an interceptor over From to here, Europe. You can arrange to have our interceptors transferred to bases throughout the world. Uh, By stationing our fleet on various Yes, I just said that. We'll I'm going to talk over you right now. Shut the hell up, Dr. Shen. Incoming transmission. And this is our end of the month report. We are extremely impressed with the progress of the XCOM project thus far, Commander. Your recent results were beyond our expectations, and that is not a statement this council makes lightly. Honestly, I've never failed to get an A on my first uh, report here, but this basically will give us a, a rundown of where the panic is, who has satellites, who doesn't, where our money's coming from, and just how, how well we've Remember, been doing overall. We will be watching. But not really helping. In the meantime, uh, we got Mel to get a, to get a handle on. So, what is it, Doctor? It's... remarkable. The crystalline structure housed within the canister is actually a suspension containing billions of cybernetic nanomachines, each made up of both organic and mechanical components. My team's analysis indicates these microscopic robots are capable of assembling mechanical structures with unprecedented efficiency. With further study and some specialized facilities, we may be able to engineer a sort of cyber suit that interfaces with the human body. My team is more interested in the possibility of physically altering the tissue itself, incorporating aspects of the alien's own genetic adaptations by using the nanites to fuse the foreign material. The commander will have to decide where the greatest advantage lies. Is there anything you agree on? Given the apparent purpose of the nanites, they allow combining organic materials with one another, or with machines. We have at least agreed to call them Meld. Always love that cutscene. Uh, for the curious, uh, mutare ad custodian basically means uh, change or mutate to protect. Bellator en machina means warrior in the machine. And as you can see, we just got a shitload of upgrades and new facilities available. The cybernetics lab is for our mechs, the MECs, genetics lab for the for the gene upgrades. And we do have a few gene mods available. You can pause and read that. Uh, some are better than others. I'll be going over that when we finally get the uh, cyber lab and the genetics lab built. Yes, I will be going with both of them. There is honestly more than enough meld for both of them. And we got a couple of scientists. You can see that, that cut three days off of everything, which is so helpful. We do have a couple of autopsies. Autopsies in this game, in addition to giving the usual benefits in the expansion, uh, they will now give you uh, some gene mods. Some of them will, anyway. But I think our best option right now is the Arc Thrower. I appreciate your efforts to support the research team, Commander. I've already put the new recruits to work in the lab. And yes, she will say that every time we get new scientists. Basically, um... <clears throat> 
Sorry, she just made me lose my train of thought there for a second. Um, in terms of uh, capturing aliens, uh, not really a spoiler to say this, but we will get the ability to interrogate them. And interrogating aliens will give you a research credit towards various technologies, which uh, boosts the research speed of those groups of technologies, like, for example, uh, beam weapons by, I believe, 50%. And so it's really helpful to just interrogate as much as you can, and it'll also give you a secondary advantage, which I'm not going to spoil. But for now, time to blow all of our money on more stupid crap. At this point, I'm wondering, we just ran the hell, right the hell out of money again, and we're almost out of power, and I don't have enough money for a thermo generator. I'm very good at my job, I assure you. At this point, I'm more worried about uh, finally getting the uh, laboratory up and running to try and increase my research speed, and uh, getting the uh, meld workshops, the cyber and the genetics lab up and running. And it's mostly a matter of at this point just trying to get the adjacency bonuses. I've seen of their technology. If the aliens were intent on conquering Earth, there's not much we could do to stop them. I'm guessing they have something else in mind. Yeah, yeah. And I figured let's get a satellite going with the rest of our rest of our money. It's like almost 50% off at this point and it's going to take 20 days, which is almost which is about two-thirds of the way to the next council report, and if I don't have a satellite ready by then and somebody's panicking, well, there goes a the country. I'm also wondering, can I sell anything to try and make back the money? I could sell the flight computer, but I'm, I've always been hesitant to sell things that I can actually research, but I do just content myself with throwing a couple sectoid corpses on the uh, gray market. I really don't know what happens to these. Like, I kind of wish that you could play with who you're selling them to like are you selling them to like a certain country and then maybe that country will give you something better later you're selling them to like criminals or whatever like i think that'd be actually be really cool i prefer to imagine mcdonald's has a interesting new range of meat from now on all right now that we have the satellite over russia any um uh also i thought figured this out on accident i've never actually clicked that button before i thought it would take me to the situation room it just uh Turns off the uh, fancy Earth graphics there. I'm gonna keep that on because I really like it. And oh crap! Commander, we have multiple reports of new abductions in progress. The locations are marked on the hologlobe. And there, we, in um, uh, good old Montreal, we can see the uh, uh, fourth type of um, reward you get, and that would be getting a new recruit. I figure we already got a pretty awesome heavy who I'm going to be building up, and at this stage of the game, I'm not really... I figure I can get a sergeant easy enough to start unlocking some soldier upgrades in the training school. So, uh, Canada's right out, and at this point, I'm just also just kind of wondering, what are we going to do about the panic? Because I'm thinking, if like, Asia's fine. Like, Asia is pretty much okay in terms of panic. North America and South America are about neck and neck, so it's more of a matter of... Uh, do I want to go with the money or do I go want to go with the uh, recruit and, well, you know my money problems and how varied and sundry that they always are. But then again, my home and native land is under attack. And I wouldn't mind a new soldier, someone I can throw to the thread. And Brazil is difficult. However, then I remember that it wasn't in Toronto, so I don't, I don't give a shit either way. <laughs> So uh, actually all three of our uh, uh, gussied up soldiers are on the active squad probably because they do have the most experience and I figured, you know what, we have one of every soldier. Let's let's keep Gonzalez on there and let's just go for it. I know I'm look, like looking for the other squaddies but I figure, you know what, let's just uh, try and get our corporal up to a sergeant ASAP and get the, uh, the squad size upgrade and whatnot. I'm just wondering if I actually got anything else for the uh, soldiers. Like, there's, no, there, there's nothing else. Like, I already got the uh, scopes on the sniper and the heavy. Uh, so we should probably haul ass over to Brazil now. And this is a long flight, because apparently the Sky Rangers never heard of going over the Pacific Ocean. I have actually had it before where the uh, the emission times out while I am en route. That hasn't happened. That fortunately hasn't happened yet. But well, we'll see what happens. Brazilian authorities have requested our help, so that's where we're going next. Local government forces have reported a coordinated alien attack in a densely populated neighborhood. They're counting on us to secure the area. 
I'm honestly not too sure what these opening voiceovers really do besides kind of give you the most bare bones of overlays, although I think I remember reading once that they might have something to do with the mission's difficulty, not 100% sure, but this was a difficult mission, so that is why I'm bringing along um, three squaddies and one corporal, so uh, we'll see how they get on. And as the more astute of you who read, who saw the uh, tr teaser Im image in the uh, thread, uh, you'll see. Alright, looks like we're at some outside some sort of maybe government building or e even a school. Kind of a nice looking little courtyard there and um, a couple of those um, abduction bots around. You might have noticed that uh, Smotry Soldier, he actually spoke in Russian. Now, as you might have noticed, there are the various uh, language packs and no, I don't really know what he's saying, even though I've been trying very hard to learn Russian. It's been going not very good whatsoever. <laughs> Speaking of going not very good, well, you'll see. And again, just spreading out as best I can because I'm terrified there's going to be some AoE attack that's going to come screaming out of nowhere, but the courtyard looks clear, so I figure I can probably move my soldiers up and try and get eyes on into the, um, into the building there. And I do get eyes on the meld, so I was pretty happy about that, and I'm thinking there's a lot of cover there. I might even be able to run and gun guns Alice in there, snipe up the meld, and then get him the hell out of there next turn. And there's no real aliens around, so I'm thinking Overwatch, not really all that necessary. So I will be moving Drad up. Oh no, I do put him in Overwatch, my bad. And uh, Cecilin can just uh, pop up there and he won't be able to do anything. Although, although I do put him in Overwatch with his pistol, just in case something sprints out into view here. And I hear a noise I haven't heard before, or at least one I don't remember, so I'm terrified there's something... There's probably something other than sectoids uh, floating around out here. And I'm so very tempted to sprint up there and try and grab that metal as quickly as I can. I really just want to run him into the building right off the bat. Now I'm considering either putting him up against the door, open it up and take a pot shot, or put him up against the window. I decide on the window because I realize that door is really open to the other bank of windows. And he actually does spot the first group of aliens, and they are a couple of sectoids. And they don't really uh, go too far away, so I'm thinking Gonzalez can probably clean this up by himself. At the very least, he has his frag grenade, and no, he doesn't have a hope in hell of hitting them, so Overwatch will have to do. So now I'm figuring, does Dixon even have a shot with a sniper rifle? No, of course he doesn't. Nothing against you, buddy, but snipers really aren't that good at the lower levels. I'm doing my damnedest to level them up, I promise. I'm also thinking, can I sneak a rocket back there? Because I really don't want them to take a pot shot at uh, Gonzalez and just pop the uh, meld right off the bat, but it's blocked completely because walls are solid objects, except when you're picking up meld canisters, apparently. And as you can see, heavies have awful, awful uh, movement range, so I can't really do much with him, but just kind of keep him back here. And Dradlin, unfortunately, does not have eyes on, so I will be moving him up a little bit farther. Uh, as for Cecilin, because he doesn't have anything with a sniper rifle, I figure let's just get him up here and maybe he can a pot shot through the window, or maybe if something spawns on the uh, left-hand side there, he will be able to shoot it with the sniper rifle. And fortunately, he doesn't wake anything up, so I figure I can move Smotry up and call it a day. I can even maybe... Yep, he it would be in cover over there, and he would get uh, excellent shots in on those sectoids, so kind of back Gonzalez up. But I decided to also just keep him near Cecilin, because sniper is a little bit squishy. So there I am, in possession to get the meld. This one's going to waste its turn just doing the mind meld, not too scared about that. I can easily take that thing out with um, 
uh, one round from the assault rifle if you get lucky enough. Then this happens. A couple of thin men decide to join the party. And yeah, they get the flank. One does uh, run away though. And then this happens! Based on its profile, I'd say the aliens developed this unit with the intention of tracking and isolating single targets. It appears to have a sophisticated evasion system as well. Perhaps we should try to avoid those tentacles. Yeah, those are seekers. They cloak. They move really far. They're really hard to hit. And they will choke the ever-living life out of an isolated soldier. I have three groups of aliens activated, six aliens in total. I'm fucked. Now, the observant of you might notice that little triangle to the one side of the fountain. That's where the seeker is, because the way the game works is it will not allow you to move while there are where, the, where there are aliens, and you probably saw the door open on its own, the window break on its own. And I'm like, yeah, that's where the seekers are. Now, I was humming and hawing right now if I was going to use this bit of knowledge to, to my advantage. Then I realize I'm looking at a squad wipe right now. I figured the game would be taking its kids glove, the, the kids gloves off sooner or later. I really was not anticipating it to happen this, this soon. And as Smashery does not have a shot on literally anything, I don't even know where, where the Thin Men are at this point. I think they all just spread into some side room inside the building. Is confirming that yes, that are that is where the uh, seekers are, and I'm terrified that they are going to choke. They'll they'll choke out somebody, and when that soldier is being choked, they are useless, and they will lose. I think maybe one or two HP a turn until they're dead, and that's it. They don't get a, sa a saving throw against death from those guys. Now, do I want to cheat? Yes, yes, I do. Fuck seekers. Well. That could have gone a lot worse, and the right away, the two biggest threats to my continued survival on this map have been taken care of. Gonzalez can move in and take out those aliens. And then this happens. I think by this point I was in some kind of like apoc apocalyptic rage. Or just shock at this point because I cannot believe that I've, I have I have basically activated every single alien on this map and if those seekers were still alive this would have been this would have been a squad wipe I am trying to play this without like reloading like a little bitch but at this point I was really tempted especially because um two of our soldiers are flanked and I'm wondering if our sniper can actually uh, do his job I'm also realizing I just blew up half the cover, and Drydalen can't hit, uh, cannot hit both of those sectoids with with its frag grenade. And in addition to that, if I were to say you keep using these explosives, I'm going to continue to miss out on weapon fragments, and I won't get a whole lot of them, which you need for research. Then I'm thinking, oh wait, the one doing the mine melding with has three HP. The one being melded with has four. It won't kill the one with 4 HP, it'll kill the one with 3 HP, and then the neural feedback will kill the one with 4 HP. Can't argue with math. So, half the aliens are dead now, thankfully. Yeah, spoiler warning, there's 8 aliens on this map, there usually is on these earlier difficulty missions. Um, two of my squad members are flanked and one can't do dick about it. And I'm thinking, I need to move him, but I really just want to take that thing out. And just pull it off. I was very, very pleased with that, especially because I'm thinking, oh, there's just the one sectoid. Those thin men are still hiding. I might have a, at least a turn of reprieve here. I wonder if I can move Dread up, try and uh, take a pot shot at that alien. Then I figure, you know what? Over here is more safe. Like, it's not like that sectoid is going to sprint down there. He's going to probably take the pot shot at the uh, heavy. Drad has a terrible terrible chance to hit so I figure you know what let's just smoke those guys the sectoid will waste his shots and then uh, I can snipe him next turn and I got the melt and everything so really I'm sitting pretty I forgot about this I forgot about the uh, thin men I forgot about them a lot so first of all Smashri takes enough takes enough damage that he will be put in the hospital after the fact 
And then I believe it was Cecil that said that Thin Men only use their poison against multiple targets. That is exactly what happens. Half my team is now poisoned. And then this Sectoid moves farther than I thought it could, does get the flank on Dradalin, and does that much damage. Oh yeah, and both my poison units use, lose 1 HP worth of uh, health right there, and I'm realizing I now have literally everybody flanked, and at least two soldiers in danger of dying in one hit, because those Thin Men have light plasma rifles which can critical hit up to 9. At this point, I'm extremely, extremely uh, screwed, as well as re religious at this moment. And I'm wondering, can I get a shot on anything? Because I'm pretty much out of high explosives, if not completely out of explosives, because like an idiot, I gave a scope to, to a two people. So I'm wondering, uh, can I snipe somebody? Not really. Can Dradalin hit somebody? Probably. Will he die to a butterfly kiss afterwards? Most certainly. So I figure, let's get him into cover, like now, but first of all, I have to check this again to see do I have a shot? The answer, of course, is still no. Do I have cover? No. Why? I blew it up. It's about at this point that I, that I realized that mocking the game, insinuating that it was being easy, was idiotic. And I'm trying to figure out why he has that little down arrow, and I realized, oh, he actually did get hurt because he was poisoned, so he is going to be, um, uh... He's going to lose some will, so I'm surprised nobody's panicked yet. I can't believe I haven't had to show that off yet. Although I was so anticipating that happened. At this point, I'm just furious. I'm like, can I just throw a frag grenade at something? And the answer is no, not really. And I'm wondering, should I re retreat my support? Should I get him out of there? You can't really do a whole heck of a lot except take pot shots with his assault rifle and maybe throw a frag. I'm like, left, right, at this point I'm thinking every space counts and it really does when you have a soldier this close to death. I'm like, 62% chance, I really want to roll the dice here because I could just maybe get the weapon fragments, but no, that that is not a thing that's going to happen. At this point I'm just thinking God really, really hates me. So let's get our other poison soldier out of harm's way, even though that is out of the smoke, but at least he would have a shot on more of the units. Not the best chance, crappy chance on both of them. I figure Thin Men, scared because he might poison other people. Why I thought I would hit anything, I have no idea. So all we have now is uh, Cecil with his pistol. Not the best chance to hit anything. I figure it's going to be softened up the Sectoid. Again, I need to get rid of those horrible notions that my soldiers can hit anything. And I realize I have a better chance of hitting this thing with a shotgun. And Gonzalez continues to prove that he is the man. And then I realize, oh god. I am shocked that these thin men did not move to get the flank. I thought 100% certain I would be losing Drad right now. The AI decides to derp and take these long-range crappy shots. Both of them miss. I am ecstatic, to say the least. And again, more health goes away. I'm not even thinking about the melt at this point. I'm just thinking how the hell I'm going to salvage this. And at this point I have one frag left and a bunch, a bunch of bloodied soldiers. Run and gun, thankfully, did get the uh, cooldown, so I can get Gonzalez up there and try and take out at least one or two of them. Uh, or uh, just one of them, sorry. He doesn't have anything AoE. So I know I can get the flank on either one of them. The only question is which one. So I do move him into this other room, try and get, uh, get him into cover as well. I'm also terrified he's going to wake up another couple of sectoids and absolutely fuck me over, but... He doesn't, thankfully, and I just decide just to get the uh, closest possible flank on this guy. I don't even care if uh, Gonzalez gets poisoned, I just want this this thing dead. Now, I uh, do have a couple, uh, a few options with this thin man. I can just try to uh, 
stack basically stack up uh, shots on him. Hope one of them will connect because any one of the, the uh, weapons will do enough damage. But I do get Dradlin close enough that a frag grenade will kill this thing in one hit. Um, obviously, like just in the one hit because I want to basically lock down the situation. Because unfortunately, our sniper whiffs. So I'm thinking, well, I can at least feed a kill to our heavy. That way, and in addition to feeding the kill, he would get um, the weapon fragments. He whiffs. Because this is the, this is not my day. I have a better than 50-50 chance of killing this thing with uh, Dradalin. But I decide, you know what, I am taking literally zero chances here. I do not want to lose a soldier, no matter what I do. In a manner of speaking, yes, that statement was correct. I really have nothing more to add to that. That was just... Let's just say when... When I say I really want to focus on only waking up uh, one group of enemy at a time, there is an extraordinarily good reason for it. And there's where the uh, teaser image came from. Uh, both Smotry and Gonzalez uh, do get a, a level up, and every single one of my soldiers from the thread is now in the hospital. I apologize heavily. Although, I, if you never thought you would be, I don't know what the hell you are expecting. So we give our promotion to our newly minted heavy corporal. The question is, uh, bullet swarm or hollow targeting? Uh, hollow targeting is garbage, honestly. Like, you should really just be focusing on one-hit kills rather than just sort of leading off with a heavy. I know their aim is crap, but really, I find just shooting twice is way better. Because generally, I sort of park my heavies in places and just let them rain down hell. And our first sergeant, the question is, uh, lightning reflexes or close and personal? I always, always go for lightning reflexes here because there is, it is really, really, really good to, in order to, um, uh, just basically waste one enemy's overwatch to run other soldiers up and kill it in one hit. So yeah, I wasn't too impressed by only getting a few weapons fragments. I am happy I got all, I got all the uh, meld and for some reason this pops up again even though I am literally building a, a laboratory right now. We will be in touch, Commander. We have medals available in the barracks, Commander, if you feel any soldiers merit an award. And at this point I remember, oh yeah, there are medals that I need to get. So you get them after uh, various missions, you only get a set number of each one. This is the uh, Urban Combat Badge, and basically you can award any, any one of these to any soldier for whatever reason you deem good. You do have to permanently assign a power, I go with the uh, plus 5 defense, because I almost never shoot at enemies in full cover anyway, like I try and get them in a different way. Now, as for which soldier will earn them, well, uh, that's actually up, up to the thread, honestly. Like, do you want to, uh, me to be the one to decide, like, who who's badass enough to get one? Like, do you want to vote for one of the thread? Like, I'm open to e either one, so it's really a matter of that. Although I do politely ask that you don't demand that your soldier get a medal, because really, it's not that. Um, it's not that they gain that much benefit from it, at least not from these earlier medals. And in addition, there hasn't really been much going on. I do realize that uh, I am almost done all of my um, uh, construction here, and hey, I could uh, get a thermo generator there in the steam finally. And let's finish off the access lift so I can finally build the third layer down and also get the satellite uplink. And I'm just wondering, should I build anything down there? Like, I'm wondering what else I need to get. I decided just to skip ahead until my, um, no, first of all, I go for the officer, officer training school because you might remember that uh, this is all halved. All these costs are halved, so I can get a lot more, so more experience, very good idea. Squad size one, pretty much uh, mandatory. I wasn't too sure on Iron Will, but I realized a lot of my soldiers are lower level, so getting this now means a lot of my soldiers are going to have really, really good will. And I really want to get that, get that one right now, but I need... Uh, Gonzalez to reach lieutenant level first. I think that's right after sergeant, so it wouldn't take too, too long. And of course, I blow my entire budget again because that's XCOM. Complete. 
And I do apologize for skipping over the cutscene there, but you're really not missing much. It's just, hey, here's a satellite dish. It, it communicates to satellites. Build more of the damn things. And let's get a med kit. Like, now. And I'm also figuring another satellite, good idea, because I can get uh, three more now, and the counts report isn't for over 20 more days. And, of course, well, I can at least buy somebody a coffee with three more dollars. I don't even know why I'm looking at this at this point. I'm just mad at myself that I keep flowing through an entire budget. But I'm very happy I finally got all those uh, officer upgrades. Because now we can start fielding five soldiers, and they will level up a lot faster. So we are going to see some higher level units here pretty quickly. At this point, I'm just wasting time to look at the arc thrower. Commander, the council is requesting your attention. Secure transmission coming in now. It's never that easy, of course. So this is actually the uh, first mission and the uh, little uh, in a very, very big side quest to Enemy Within. So uh, we will be taking a look at that next time as we figure out exactly what the hell went on in France. And I am very happy to see more, more money, more scientists and more engineers because I am in desperate, desperate need of all three of those things. So I do hope you'll join me next time for mission four where we will find out exactly why the French got defeated. Insert your own joke here. So for now, thank you once again very much for watching. Again, sign up still wide, wide, wide open. So if you want to get in on the action, feel free to. And this has been your commander speaking. Peace out, squaddies.